Hi, Bob Greenier, volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So this is another video looking at analysis of the Lion 2 reactor. And I'm calling it a question over a tadpole. Why am I calling it that? Well, out of the non-magnetic particles that were found in the uh, ash, uh, we called it sample 3 in this video here, Lion 2 SEMS. SEM analysis sample description. Uh, there were a range of things that we tested, and uh, they're in this Steemit article, uh, which will be below this video or within the description of the video. And there was two features. Uh, there was actually a number of these. There's some more over here. Uh, there's a kind of like silvery round blob here, a long one here, another long one here. But we selected two that were fairly close together. Uh, this kind of one that I'm calling the question mark and this one that I'm calling the tadpole. Uh, and as an aside here, I have learned that it's very important to take a very good uh, colour, ideally macro photography. This isn't that. It was taken from a, a sort of angled shot that I did my best attempt to align. Uh, but I w in future, I will be taking very good uh, as long as I remember, uh, quality uh, colour photography uh, with the same kind of view that the SEM would get um, so that I can match up items. So you can see this, this grey blob down here, uh, which is an anal analysed here, and these red blobs, one of them is uh, analysed here. And it, it gives you a better idea of what you might want to be looking at under the SEM when you only have a grey view. Some SEMs have colour view, but this, this one doesn't. So it's useful to have that, and also when you're talking about things later on. Anyway, so I want to talk about uh, what the actual elemental composition is of these, uh, this question mark and this tadpole. And uh, you can see that they were selected here and here, uh, spectrum 10 and 11. And so the question mark uh, is a rather beautiful uh, looking thing here, nice and silver and shiny. And I've dropped these out, and you can do this into other tabs. You can right button click and go open in new tab. So I put this in a new tab. And uh, you can see here spectrum 11. And if I zoom in on this, we've got oxygen. Obviously, we've got that in the cell. Uh, silicon, aluminium, the, these are all sort of things we have in the cell. Calcium we determined was a, a contaminant uh, at a small degree in the uh, the alumina cells. But there's zirconium in here. Why have we got zirconium in here? There's also something I also want to draw your attention to, uh, is this kind of extruded blob here also has this uh, spiral feature running around it, which itself, um, I mean, it's it's absolutely fascinating uh, what this is here. So uh, that's the question mark, and it's the zirconium that I want to draw your attention to. The interesting thing about zirconium, uh, well, there's many interesting things, but it has a, a very high uh, melting uh, point, uh, 2,128 degrees C. So uh, how is this getting in here? Uh, into this uh, non-magnetic group here. So this is our zirconium, and uh, we also have uh, some close-up here. If we pull this out into a new tab here, uh, there's a couple of things that I want to look at here. Um, so, so some of the calcium or, or uh, other elements may be these fragments that are in here. But the interesting thing is, is that these particles look like that they were uh, trapped onto this as this, whatever it was, cooled very suddenly uh, because it looks like they're actually impregnated partially into the what might have been a soft surface. So you actually have these dimples where the material has kind of got stuck on onto this kind of glassy-like surface. So you can imagine uh, it, it didn't get fully embedded, so it's almost like it cooled again, one of these situations where it cooled very quickly, uh, but caught a few uh, particles into its surface uh, as it um, sort of cooled down. This is my, my uh, uh, conjecture here, uh, but uh, I think you can see from the visuals that there's some supporting evidence. I will look at the tadpole now, and uh, again I've broken it out into another tab, and in this case uh, we selected just the end here, 
And what has happened in these close-up SEM shots, that either the movement of the SEM table or the electron beam uh, has moved these particles to cover it up. But when it was actually, the scanning was going on, it wasn't uh, covered up. So if I zoom into this, uh, you can see, again, uh, we have elements that we know we should have in the reactor, carbon, oxygen, aluminium, silicon, but there is this zirconium again. So where is this zirconium coming from? Now, uh, <clears throat> one thing that I would, you know, look at is, you know, how could you get to zirconium from the material that's in the reactor? And it's all the way down here, and we've got carbon, and we've got nickel, and we've got oxygen, and so forth. How can we get there? Well, yesterday I showed you a technique where we used a, a spreadsheet. Uh, this spreadsheet here by, uh, that I got from this online book by Yu Jui Liao. I'm probably saying that very wrong. Uh, but this spreadsheet is uh, available um, through uh, another video on our YouTube. Uh, it's also available in the previous Steemit uh, blog post. But... Um, what I was thinking was, uh, you know, if we put the zirconium in here, what is close to zirconium? And um, I've already done this, and what I found was that down here, there's, there's nothing close to zirconium here. Zirconium, this is molybdenum, platinum, gold, platinum. So we've not found those platinum, ruthenium, no, that's not a problem. Zirconium and sulfur here. Okay, so there's a little bit of a close proximity with uh, zirconium and sulfur. Now, if we actually go back to the charts themselves here, uh, you can see uh, the zirconium here, and it's not actually picking up any sulfur, but the, the zirconium peak is actually the one that's just over 2 uh, keV. So if we go back to the chart here, uh, this is actually not this peak that it's referring to. It's actually referring to these zirconium peaks here. So there isn't really a confusion uh, between the zirconium and the uh, sulfur in this case. And so <clears throat> there's a fair uh, argument to make that this really is zirconium that's being found here. Well, this wasn't the only experiment uh, that we saw zirconium in. Uh, uh, there was the part process fuel from ECHO. And if I go into this particular uh, data set, uh, a large number of sample points were taken, uh, not just in this SEM, but also one that was shared during uh, the Copenhagen lecture. And <clears throat> you can see that in every case, uh, obviously there's lots of lead uh, forming, uh, which uh, apparently was not in the source materials um, and maybe some minor contamination from the lab. But there is this zirconium, 8.3 here by weight. Uh, it's 5.7, 9.1. Everything is seeing zirconium. Everything is seeing zirconium. Now, the point about this is this, <clears throat> the way this fuel is processed in this ultrasonic cavity, and you have these uh, 1.5, 1.5, and 1.5 uh, kilowatt uh, ultrasonic uh, horns putting 4.5 kilowatts of sound energy into the water with the nickel and the carbon and the uh, titanium in there, is that it's, it's mashing everything up. Uh, so you can't actually see something that's a particular thing other than these little sort of cubic... Uh, sort of cubes of uh, crystals here, um, uh, which all seem to contain the zirconium. Where is this zirconium coming from? I, I would almost be happier if it was, you know, for instance, uh, sulfur, because uh, if it was sulfur, then you could have like a George Oshawa reaction uh, fusing two oxygens to get sulfur. Or you could say that, <clears throat> well, we've got uh, a silicon and aluminium in the uh, lion reactors. Uh, and so uh, with some uh, sort of addition of deuterons and, and some decays around the phosphorus area, you can end up getting over to, to sulfur. However, uh, we don't have uh, aluminium in uh, the 
uh, echo reactor. So <clears throat> this doesn't really follow suit. So really, it does look like it is zirconium that is being made. And so this is the echo uh, part process fuel. So this is the second data point. But then I want to draw your attention to the evidence from line one. And this was published before we even got the material from line two uh, into the SEM or even, I think, before it was even run. So, yes, this is done uh, <clears throat> uh, before that. And if we actually break out this uh, image here... Uh, so we're looking at this area, and it, it's actually a close-up and a close-up. Uh, we've got three zones that were tested. Uh, one which is on the sort of copper area. This which is turns out to be silver, which has migrated from the tip. And this, uh, these two bits which we said uh, had come out of the cannon. And if we go into this um, and really look into it, uh, the uh, Spectrum 17 here uh, has uh, the silver and uh, oxygen and copper. The Spectrum 18 is copper and oxygen. And the uh, Spectrum 19 here, this sort of black rod, it's black because it's it's got um, more um, sort of uh, less heavier elements in it compared to the, the copper in, in this part. But it's seeing some copper and it's seeing some silver. And this is probably because it's a point and it's maybe overshooting are not quite accurately hitting that, so it's, it's picking up some from the background. However, you are seeing the zirconium here. Now, the interesting thing in this is that we actually had the beam energy higher, and I was discussing this in uh, methods for uh, accurately assessing which elements are uh, in your EDS. And you can see that it has this peak here uh, at somewhere, uh, uh, so... Uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So uh, uh, between 15 and 16 uh, uh, kilo electron volts and another little one here is actually present. So whilst we didn't have that on the echo uh, part process fuel and the line two, we have got it here on a similar kind of thing that's been extruded uh, as was found in the Lion 2 uh, detritus. So let's have a look at this zirconium peak here. It's got between 15 and 16 kV. Uh, back <clears throat> with our chart here. And we go all the way down to... La, 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 la. We're going to get there in a minute. Uh, there we go. So at 15.69 and 7.46 and 7.74, 7, 7, 7, uh, 7, 7, we have these zirconium peaks. And they are actually the primary peaks. Uh, and we have californium and actinium and polonium and, and strontium. I'm pretty glad that those things don't uh, aren't in the ash, actually. Um, strontium here. So this is good because there's no sulfur around here. So essentially, we are able to say with pretty high degree of certainty that the uh, lion reactor is not only producing zirconium when it doesn't appear in any of the fuel materials. We are able to say that it produced it in line two as well as line uh, one, and that the same thing is being seen in the echo part processed fuel. This, to me, is a very strong data set. I would like for your opinions. Please look at the Steemit blog and delve into the data. Again, thank you for your time.